Hey guys, Vegan Cyclist here. So I wanna talk about race teams, right? And kind of how to get involved with them and sort of break down the uh, what type of teams there are and, uh, and sort of give you my tips and advice on finding the right one for you. So the first thing is you wanna find out what you want out of cycling, okay? Do you want to just see new things, see new sites, cruise around and not worry really about any sort of program? You know, or do you wanna be a racer? Do you wanna do triathlons? You know, do you wanna just, just for fitness and just kind of uh, burn some extra calories. You know, you gotta decide what it is out of cycling that you want. That will help you find the right group of people to align yourself with and, and, and find the right team that's gonna have uh, your same goals in mind. So with that being said, teams are amazing. And you know, some people just wanna ride by themselves and that's cool too, but you know, everyone wants to hang out with people that like the things that they like. And so being a part of a team can in, can really heighten the experience of cycling to something that you can't really achieve on your own, right? Um, you can conversate with these guys, you can really meet some new people and have a lot of friends and grow your, your you know, your friend base uh, pretty fast and it's a lot of fun. So basically there are going to be five different types of teams or clubs. So. This is kind of how it breaks down. Level one is gonna be your casual club, right? This is open to everyone. It doesn't matter who you are or what you ride. You ride a fixie or you ride a beach cruiser or a tandem or a recumbent. It doesn't really matter. A casual club is gonna be open for everyone because you usually have to pay some sort of annual fee to be a part of it. Now, money is gonna to go to uh, community events or rides that that club will put on. Uh, in my hometown, there's like the Fresno Cycling Club and it's open to a bunch of people. I, have, I think they have like 700 members. Um, you have to buy the kits and you have to pay dues, um, but you get to ride these really cool, big like centuries that they put on or, or structured rides. And you know, out of like 700 people, there's, there's someone for everyone, right? They, they really are organized well. Um, but racing is not something that they're interested in. Usually at this level, it is more for um, a social aspect of cycling, right? Kind of just hanging out with people that do what you do. So if you wanna get involved with this type of level, usually they'll have some sort of website and you kinda of just sign up there or, or it's pretty easy because you have to pay some sort of money. So they'll make it as easy as possible for you to join something like this. Level two is gonna be like your sport club, right? So this is kind of a hybrid between, you know, just social, but then uh, sort of kind of maybe a race oriented type club. This is gonna be maybe your like triathlon clubs um, or, you know, a, a club that you don't have to pay an annual fee to be a part of and pretty much everyone is allowed in, uh, but you do have to buy the kits and so that, you know, you can kind of fit in. Um, this type of group is gonna be you know, real heavy on like the Saturday and Sunday rides, probably not ride too much other than that. Uh, but they, you know, have a lot of guys, maybe like 20, 30 guys come together on a Saturday or Sunday and go for a really awesome ride. You're going to get a lot of different uh, pace, you know, uh, variability here because uh, you got maybe some guys that have been riding for 20 or 30 years and then you have other guys that have just started, you know, and that's kind of where I came in. I started with a team like this. And you know, at the first, the first ride, I mean, I was very young, I was like 24, and I've got like a 70 year old dude blowing my doors off. I'm just like, what the hell's going on? Like, I'm so youthful and strong, and this, I thought this dude was gonna have a heart attack. And then he just, you know, cooks me up this hill, right? So you're gonna have guys that are really experienced, and they can really help you uh, kind of learn the ropes. So if you, you know, if you're, if you're wanting to, kind of take cycling a little bit more serious than just a social thing where you ride to eat pancakes on a Sunday, um, which is totally cool if that's, if that's the case. You know, this level is where you're gonna wanna start off on. And how to get involved is to find the people on the road, go and ride with them. There may be a few different clubs um, available for you, so you're gonna wanna ride with everyone to see which one you really fit in with. Level three is gonna be like your development race team. Right, and not that you have to race to be a part of these teams, but it's it, it's pretty recommended, right? These teams are gonna be centered around racing. They're gonna have sponsors. Um, usually teams at this level are gonna have like a $20,000 budget or around there. Most of the development teams have some sort of incentive for riders uh, that are like cat three, two, or one, uh, where your kits are maybe free or discounted or you get some discounts at the bike shops. 
So um, this again is, is a team that you're probably gonna have to be invited to. Um, it's, it's not something where they're gonna just let everyone in because it's a kind of a, um, a very intimate dynamic with these guys. If you've ever been on a race team, um, you, you gotta trust the people that you're with out there on the race. And so a lot of times these development race teams are guys that ride together all the time, right? So they're riding, you know, five, six days a week and, uh, and, and most of the time it's together. And so they'll travel together, they'll go to the races together, they'll race in the races together, you know, so it's kind of a tight knit group. And I know that sometimes you'll see them on the road and I've, I've been in this position where I'm, I'm just blown by this, you know, train of guys that all look super cool and uh, they don't wanna talk and they kinda of come off like dickheads, but they're not dickheads, right? Talk to them, they, they're awesome guys, I know it, I know they are, right? And so uh, chat them up, see if the, you can tag along with them every once in a while, get someone's phone number or email, and, uh, and, and to get on one of these teams, you're gonna have to ride with them more than once, right? They're gonna have to see that you actually um, have some, some sort of commitment to the sport, because anyone that's gonna be in this level of racing has a pretty decent commitment, right? They're spending a lot of money probably, and, and they're really wanting to get strong. Level four is gonna be your domestic race team. This is where guys are pretty much, this is their living, right? This is what they do. It's kind of rare that you'll have a guy that uh, has a side job or does something else and also races on a team like this. Um, the, the management of a domestic race team is gonna usually be that's what they do, right, for a living. Uh, their budgets are gonna be upwards of $50,000 a year or more. Uh, if you can make it to this level, you're gonna be invited, right? Someone's gonna reach out to you or that you've contacted the team and sent them your resume. Uh, it's gonna be all results based. You're gonna have to really have a lot of performance uh, to back up why you should be a part of a domestic race team. But yeah, most people aren't ever gonna reach this level and it's really, really uh, stressful, right? You're gonna have to train a ton. Um, you're gonna have to give up a lot. And then level five is gonna be like your world tour team, right? Like your Team Sky, your Team Movistar, uh, that type of thing, right? Like this is gonna be where this is the pinnacle of cycling. These guys are getting paid big dollars, um, or sometimes not. You know, like a, a Neo Pro, uh, their contracts can be like twenty thousand dollars a year, which isn't that much. But all their traveling is paid for, and uh, you know, you, there's not a whole lot of spots on these type of teams, so um, it's very hard to get onto something like this. Usually they will uh, pick out of the domestic teams, but you could be the best in your state or the best in your country. You could have won some really huge races and still not be able to uh, grab a spot on one of these teams. Um, I mean, look at Chris Horner, right? He now rides for Safeway Aragas, and that's a domestic team. Like, I mean, I've raced against them here in like Snelling, California. So he went from the pinnacle to more of a level four type type team. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of crazy, but you know, this is the height of it and most people aren't going to obtain this, this level of racing. So guys, I hope this breakdown kind of helped you out. Um, let me know if you are on a team or if you, you know, send me some pictures or something. Uh, send me a Facebook link to your guys' uh, race page. I'd love to check it out and uh, maybe guys, maybe give you guys a shout out or something and help uh, grow your team. But like I said, you know, if, if you don't want to race, club level or sport level is gonna be where you wanna go. Uh, if you do wanna race, you know, finding um, the, the race kits out uh, around town and finding, um, tracking them down and, and riding with them quite a bit, ride with multiple teams to try to find which one is gonna be the best for you. And you know, just overall have fun. Like don't forget that cycling is for fun, right? So, so I know sometimes there can be some drama, don't get wrapped up in that stuff. And guys, thank you so much. Like, subscribe, check me out, check all my other videos out, Vegan Cyclist. See ya.